Welcome to the Beast Rider Podcast. I am your host, Ryan Sakamoto, and today we're going to be discussing making sense of Sam Darnold to the San Francisco 49ers. So let's get started now. For those who are new to subscribing to my channel, thank you for tuning in. For those who already subscribed to my channel, thank you to you as well. For those of you that obviously you're subscribed to my channel, that's why you're watching it, but be sure to turn on the bell notification so you get notified when I go live, when I upload content, and that way you can stay in the loop on all things Beast in real time. Also, I was looking at my analytics and I noticed that 83% of you are not subscribed to my channel yet watch all my videos, so be sure to hit the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner of your screen, and again, turn on the bell notifications so you guys get notified when I upload content. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Again, thank you for all, thank you for all, Thank you all of you for tuning in and we're just going to go and delve right into it, right? So Sam Donald to the San Francisco 49ers, right? So if you watch Twitter, if you're on Twitter, you know 49ers Twitter goes berserk over the quarterback situation. No matter who the quarterback is discussed, it was first Deshaun Watson, nothing new with Deshaun Watson. Then they pivot over to Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford is now off to the LA Rams and then they pivot again to the draft and how they should trade up for a top three quarterback in the draft and then 49ers Twitter goes berserk because obviously the draft's not here yet so what is there left to talk about oh let's talk about Josh Rosen because the 49ers just signed him to an extension and then they realize that Josh Rosen isn't really the answer he's more of a stop cap a stop gap or a bridge if anything and so now with Jason Lockenfora saying that the 49ers have high interest in Sam Donald that's where we are today speaking of Jason Lockenfora. For those who don't know, he actually went on air and said his sources have told him that the 49ers are very high on Sam Darnold. I'm going to go ahead and reread that quote as he says. Let me pull it up. Sources tell me 49ers coach Kyle Shannon has very high on Sam Darnold. If that's a match, follow me here. The 49ers would trade Jimmy Garoppolo. And sources tell me Bill Belichick would love to have Jimmy G reunion in New England. It is going to be a wild off season. Well, if you watch my latest podcast, you will already be in the know before this news broke that yes, Jimmy G and Bill Belichick reunion is in the cards. It is in discussions, as my sources have told me as well. However, again, Jason Lockenfora echoing my analysis that I put out two days prior to the news breaking out that Bill Belichick likes Jimmy G. Without further ado, all right, so. If you wanted to see what I had to say on that podcast just days before Lock and Fora broke it, go ahead. You can see, and everything is timestamped, so I can't say I didn't say it in hindsight. It was in real time, so a couple days prior, yes. And you can include or watch all my earlier podcasts and how it's relatable or how it ties into this one in the pinned comment section below. Also, I've included it up above, so you can go ahead and watch that as well. Okay, so. Getting back to this specific podcast, let's talk about Sam Darnold, right? So why is Kyle Shanahan so high or reportedly so high on Sam Darnold? What does he see in the former USC quarterback? Well, let me just break it down to you. He has a top 10 arm talent. Um, He can make all the throws, can throw off platform. He has dual threat ability, something that Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't necessarily have. He has pocket presence to climb up the pocket when the Sharks are circling the arc in order to buy some time. He can make all the throws, especially on the deep outs and the quick slants and throw to the receiver in stride. So he's very accurate that way. And the most important thing, I think, why Jimmy Garoppolo, or excuse me, not Jimmy Garoppolo, why Kyle Shanahan likes Jimmy Garoppolo is his quick decision making. It's very decisive when he makes his reads, going through his progressions, and he's just boom, 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 done. All right, now, the drawback to adding a guy like Sam Donald is let's look at the cons, right? We talked about the pros. Now let's talk about the uh, the cons, right? Whereas well, throwing motion is elongated. So anytime he has that and he winds up that Hideo Nomo throwing motion, the defensive backs and the secondary players are going to be able to jump the route. And because Donald's slow release is elongated, it's going to allow a split second for any secondary player to kind of head to go ahead, go ahead and make a play on the football. So we, we've seen it, right? So he 
Interceptions, he's a turnover machine. That's one thing that's going to be something that will need to be coached up when it comes to Sam Darnold, his ability to look off that safety and then move the other way. He's done that in, at USC, so can can he translate that at the NFL level? It's all depending on the schematics and how Kyle Shanahan wants to play that route. If he has Sam Darnold as his quarterback, he will fine-tune the processing on how to do that. But getting back to Sam Darnold and the cons, that's one thing that was the knock on him coming out of college was he has an elongated release and anytime you do that in the NFL level you better make sure that the ball gets there because defensive backs are a lot faster they're a lot quicker they're a lot smarter so you're going to be able to have to accommodate whatever weakness you have in your game in this in this case it's his deficiency with his throwing motion and go ahead and get the ball out as quickly as possible okay the other thing that concerns me is he's seeing ghosts he admitted to seeing ghosts and the reason why he's seeing ghosts in New York is because he doesn't have an offensive line to work with so the timing from the sh- the timing the, the time clock in his head is going to be sped up obviously because he has nothing in front of him he has nothing to work with in front of in front of him I've always said it time and time again on Twitter that games are won down in the trenches we saw in the Super Bowl right with the Tampa Bay Bucks well if you don't have a stable offensive line then everything else is thrown out the window from the offense side of the football because your rushing game can't get going, your running attack can't get going, and as far as everything else is concerned, uh, when it comes to the offensive line, you can't go through your progression, so wide receivers don't have enough time to get open, the timing goes off there, and it just creates a myriad of issues. So, with that being said, I think the muscle memory aspect of it, when it comes to Sam Donald in New York, doesn't really play in his favor because of the fact that he doesn't have time to throw and make these reads, which is why he's seen ghosts, all right? So, the another, the another uh, con to it that you have to kind of compare is, is Sam Donald a better option than Josh Rosen? I think this goes without saying, yes, absolutely. It's not really a con, but it's something that will be brought up. If they brought in Sam Donald, is he better than Josh Rosen? Yes. But more importantly, is he a big enough upgrade over Jimmy Garoppolo? So, what does Jimmy Garoppolo do or doesn't do that Sam Darnold brings to the table? One, he lists to play another down, Sam Darnold. Uh, he doesn't make ill-advised throws. And when he does, it's not totally out of the blue. Like, oh my gosh, where did that come from? With Jimmy Garoppolo, anytime he's under duress, he will force a ball downfield hoping and praying that the wide receiver or the tight end, George Kittle, would be able to come up and make the catch in double, triple traffic, whatever the case may be. He also has lapses in coverage, or diagnosing coverage, excuse me, when it's a cover three or when when it's a cover four, he'll notice that the boundary cornerback will always jump off their route. We saw uh, last year, two years ago, excuse me, with Marcus Peters, when he was with the LA Rams right before he got traded, you will notice down inside the red zone, I broke that play in an earlier podcast, as to what I'm talking about, you can watch that. Uh, you can excuse me, you can watch that in an earlier podcast. But I, yeah, it's just it's things that you see in Jimmy Garoppolo's game compared to Sam Darnold. It's not the same. And let's peel back another layer of the onion to get to the core. Right? What was Darnold working with in New York? Right? People talk about being a box score reader. I always talk about being box score reader. And oh man, he ranks dead last in this. He ranks yards per attempt. He ranks dead last in that. And for me, it's almost like, well, how can any quarterback, no matter who it is, Sam, Darnold, Jimmy Garoppolo, whoever, if they don't have an offensive line to work with, everything starts up front. Again, if you don't have an offensive line, you're automatically put at a disadvantage because now defenses can make you one-dimensional by default. Either throw the ball or run the ball, but they can stack the box because you know you're not going to run the ball. Or if you don't have a rushing attack because your offensive line is so weak, you can just sit back and take take away the underneath routes and you'll never get to a third and short because of the fact that they're always protecting the sticks at all times and they are not respecting the running game with a two, three, three, four yard run. It just doesn't work that way. So when you put that into account, if you look at what Sam Darnold was working with, he has the worst offensive line in New York. Okay. Second of all, his wide receiver unit is depleted, tight ends included, and then the rushing attack. Like what rushing attack does he have to work with? And put that all together, it causes for disaster. It doesn't matter who's behind center. So is it fair to compare Sam Darnold's numbers to Jimmy Garoppolo's? No, because look at Jimmy Garoppolo, what he was working with. He had the likes of Emmanuel Sanders, George Kittle, the best tight end in the NFL, right? So, And then the offensive line where Kyle Shanahan can really scheme things up and run inside zone, outside zone, hiding his offensive line 
deficiencies when it comes to zone blocking scheme. So again, it goes back to play calling. It goes back to the skill players that he has to work with. And most importantly, the offensive line. So Sam Donald didn't really have those pieces. Now you're projecting how that would translate if he was on the 49ers. And is that a big enough upgrade than to, than to just keep Jimmy Garoppolo? These are questions that every GM, when it comes, is going to have to ask themselves, especially when you're Joe Douglas making this trade, and then when you're GM John Lynch and you want that quarterback, is it a match made in heaven to where it's a big enough upgrade to where you can move these other parts in order to get your quarterback of the future? Then you have to compare Sam Darnold's numbers and his potential and rank that, and how's the tier in that grouping compared to the top three quarterbacks in this upcoming draft? These are all moving parts. However, this is what goes behind the this is what goes on behind the scenes as every GM has to make this decision, right? When accounting for this kind of blockbuster deal, right? So should Shanahan or Lynch make a play? Um, they're banking on Sam Donald's potential, like I said. And when you're banking on a player's potential, you're also banking on the supporting cast that he's going to have around him. If Sam Donald was to come to San Francisco, he'll be working with Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, and an offensive line, possibly left tackle Trent Williams. And let's be honest, he's a really big upgrade over Mikai Becton, who was a rookie last year. And don't be surprised if you see the New York Jets, who hold the number two overall pick, if they st- choose to stick with Sam Darnold, they go Pina Sewell out of Oregon because again like I said, the offensive line is the worst in the NFL in my opinion and nothing has changed that. I don't think there's an offensive lineman in free agency that's worth getting based on the based on what's out there. I mean, you could go after a guy like Alejandro Villanueva, but he's a left tackle. So then what? And I don't, I'm don't. i not even that high in Alejandro Villanueva to be in the first place. I'm, I've been covering him for the past three years now and if you just look at the Nick Bosa game in week three in 2019 he just ate him alive simply off the bull rush so things like that just kind of just what did the Jets do right what did the Jets do but yeah getting back to Sam Donald I like Sam Donald I'll go on record and say I like Sam Donald now do I like him better than Josh Rosen absolutely do I like him better than Zach Wilson Mm, I'm not so sure I'm not so sure because I like Zach Wilson's potential more than I like Sam Donald's potential in this system and again you're banking on you're banking on a player's potential it's unfair to grade Sam Donald with what he was working with in New York it's just not fair and when you compare Zach Wilson and what he brings to the table and then kind of project how the two quarterbacks would compare to each other if they had the same supporting cast I would rather roll the dice on Zach Wilson and the reason I say that is because again if you watch my earlier podcast, something that Zach Wilson has that I don't think any other quarterback in this draft has is the ability to stay calm, cool, collect, and collected, but also become a real dual threat quarterback. Aside from Trevor, Will- Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields, we all know those guys, but I'm just saying when comparing Zach Wilson, who's probably going to be the second or third quarterback off the board, and comparing what he brings to the table compared to Sam Darnold, right? Is it a big enough leap to say, okay, I'd rather just save my draft capital, not hit the panic button, and trade for a guy like Sam Donald, and then trade up in the top three for a quarterback like Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson is a guy who I mentioned is an absolute baller. He would fit Kyle Shanahan's scheme. He even admitted to saying that his best fit would be the San Francisco 49ers. And coming from BYU, Steve Young came from BYU. I'm just saying, so... I'm not saying he's the next Steve Young, but I am saying that what I see in Zach Wilson's game, I think would translate better under the scheme than a Sam Donald. Now, again, this is all projecting, right? This is all real time. You guys can have your opinion. I have my opinion. But again, if the 49ers did make a play for Sam Donald, I wouldn't be upset. Now, the question is, will they make that play? That remains to be seen. All right, well, that'll be it for today. I hope you liked what I had to say. If you did, please hit the subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner of your screen as I keep all things beast. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good night. Beast Rider, out.